good day. This is Teresa Fredericks from Growing Businesses Using Projects, bringing you yet another video, this time on Microsoft Excel 2016. We are setting up the resource sheet and calendar. My intent with this and every video is to ensure that the ordinary man can understand what is being taught and apply it. Today, our agenda, we're going to be looking at setting up the resource sheet in Excel. We're going to register vacation and other non-weekend time or resources, and we're going to document information using notes. This is the resource sheet that we're going to set up on Excel. You would re remember it from Microsoft Project. It's the same sheet that we're going to be setting up. So let's take a deeper dive into what are resources. In WinMS Project Talks of Resources, they're talking about work materials, cost, and budget. But today we are not looking at budget. So we are going to be looking at work. Work, people, and equipment needed to complete a task. So electrician and bulldozer are work resources. Materials, consumables that get used up as the project proceeds, for example, steel. Costs represents financial costs derived from specific tasks, for example, travel. So let's take a greater look at work resources. There are two factors that are very important, availability and cost. Availability focuses on one to spend the specific resources, can work on the task, and how much can they perform. Could they perform 100% in a day? Could they, you know, are they available only part-time? These are some of the issues with the availability. But here the major factor is skills required. What about costs? Cost refers to the financial costs incurred by the resources performing the work on the project. The budget for the project will be a major factor. So sometimes you may have to go for less in terms of skill resources. You may not be able to get all the skilled resources you need on the project because you cannot pay for them. So you may have to have a mix of skilled and unskilled. This, these are management decisions. Should you use bringing a crane or should you try to do it manually? Cost is a very important factor. So let's look at some key other key facts about cost book resources. One of the main considerations in naming people are who will see the resource names and how will they identify them. So you have three, there are three ways basically of naming people in MS Project and we are using the same uh, we are applying this in the same way to Excel. So you can use the name, Tom Smith. You can use the, the position, job position specialist, procurement specialist. Or you can use categories of people. When you mean with categories, let's call groups of people. So you may have carpenters. You may have laborers. You may have masons. It may not make sense to actually call each by their name. So that... If you see 300% in terms of availability, it means there are three people. And then you have equipment, like a computer printer, a work resource. So where is it, what's the difference? People have a limited number of hours of work. They can work six, they can work eight, or they can work 12. If they're working 12, four hours, most likely will be overtime. People might be flexible in the tasks they do, and they can perform many tasks on the project. Equipment resources can undertake short or long duration work. You can work equipment for 24 hours. They have maintenance breaks and can be used by more than one resource. So then you have to be very careful when you're allocating equipment that you don't allocate the same piece of equipment to two different tasks, two different people at the same, to be used at the same time. You would over allocate the resource. Equipment resources are more specialized. For example, a computer prints, a computer printer prints, and maybe a commission multiple tasks, which we spoke about previously. So let's take another look at material. Material resources are consumables, nails, lumber, galvanized. They're used by work resources. They're used to track a fixed quantity or rate of consumption. 
minimum useless units do not apply because material resources do not perform work. But they have labels and they can be measured. So what I'm I see, if you have paper, you have to say how you, is it a ream of paper and you have to give a unit cost. The unit cost is an important measure because, for instance, if it's four reams that is consumed, it will be four by whatever is the unit cost of one ream. Now, cost represents a financial cost associated with a task. Such resources do not work and have no effect on the schedule. You, may, you enter the cost value of a cost resource only when you assign it to a task. So what am I saying? You have a budget for airfare. It is expected that three of your people will, will travel during the month. You do not know when you don't have the specifics of each travel. When each person undertakes the and uh, goes through that flight and you have the information in terms of the cost of this, then it's entered. So it's not budget, it is not entered up front. Now there's an exception. Contracted personnel who charge a flat fee for a project can be looked at as cost. What am I saying? You have sent out a tender, you have looked at proposals, you have awarded a contract and the payment is associated with the terms of the contract so that you can use this exception as a cost. It's not a monthly, weekly, hourly rate. It's going to be paid in, in keeping with when the deliverables are produced. So let's look at resource calendars. A resource calendar is open by MS project for each work resource. It controls the working and non-working times of the resource. The calendar determines when work for a specific resource can be scheduled. So what am I saying? There's a project calendar. A project calendar may have certain fixed hours of work, but this particular resource may be on vacation leave during the month or during parts of the month. And in order to schedule him, you, the, the, him or her, you need to know that. So that you, are, you need to have a resource calendar that will show when he or she is available. It takes precedence over the project calendar. A resource can be assigned a different calendar rather than a project calendar. For example, if a resource is working beyond the hours of either the standard or the night shift calendars, you may allocate him to the, you may assign him to the 24 hour calendar. So in terms of our Excel adjustments, we can adjust for flexi time, we can adjust for vacation leave, we can adjust for available at other times when he's not available. For example, time spent in training or attending a conference. Adjustment can also be made for variations in work week and times. Remember you allocate in resources. Suppose this person is part-time and he only works on Friday and Thursday. So then you have to reflect that in your planning. So it will be reflected in his resource calendar. The resource calendar has a higher priority than the base calendar and the task calendar has the highest priority. We haven't discussed task calendars as yet, but we would shortly. I am in Excel, Microsoft Excel. I've color coded the headings. We have resource name, type, materials, initials, group, max, standard rates, overtime rate, cost per use, accrual base, and code. One of the first things I want to do is to establish drop down boxes. So we're going to highlight the columns that we're going to use to establish the drop down boxes. Go to data and go across the data validation. The box will come up. It's asking what you want. We want to do a list and it will ask the source. Remember when you talked about type, we saw, said type of work materials and costs. So I've identified these three, I'm going to block it. And it's going to come up here in terms of the cell reference and you click OK. What that will do is create drop down boxes. So Carl Smith, I will go here and I see it's work. John Stevens, work. Um, carpenters, OK, let's do carpenters. Again, work and we might as well finish carpenters. Now, you, you have to type in an initial to represent carpenters and seeing you have Carl Smith, 
probably it may make sense to put C8 to differentiate. And 300% uh, it means that they have, there are three of them. Group, you can use that for either internal groups or external groups, or if you want to reference different departments in your organization, whatever. All right, standard rate, the rate you are, being, you are going to pay per hour or per week or per month. Overtime, if the person is entitled to overtime, here you have Tony Peters who is entitled to overtime and you have a rate for that person. The cost per use, you can have a cost per use for persons. If, for instance, you have somebody who is telling you if, you have, if they have to come out, you have to pay them an extra amount of money in addition to their normal fee. Like a doctor, he may have one fee for an office and another fee for if he comes by your premises and Okay, but cost per use is normally for equipment. You want to bring a crane onto your property, you may have to pay a transportation cost to get it there in addition to the norm. So that is when you're going to have cost per use. But the next one we have to do a drop down box for is a crew. All right, so we're going to do the same thing data, data via validation. We're going for a list, and here a crew you, you're picking up. You're picking up, so you click in source and you're picking up end start and period. And you click OK. And now you are going to be able to say Carl Smith is going to be parated. And paint, you cannot parade paint, you have to pay for it before you leave the shop. Travel, you would not have a course or anything associated with travel until it's incurred. Crane, however, so let's finish crane. Um, crane is going to be work. Um, you know, here you can put CR and um, the you may have to pay 159 per hour. You're gonna have to put in that, but what we want to do right now is to put the crane is normal. They may agree to pay at the end, or they may want it at the start. I'll finish this and come back. Okay, let us quickly review what we have. We have all the work materials, the paint, we have the per liter. Paint does not have maximum or overtime, it just has the cost per unit. So each liter would be 120. The standard the calendar cost does not have any allocation in terms of money. We have to put in the initials, what else? Or oh, the crane is work and it has a per use, cost per use. And it also has, it can have an overtime if it's working overtime, the standard rate in terms of the hour. So let's quickly deal with the resource calendar. What I did, I took from the Gantt chart the days, and in terms of the number, like 25th of April, and what it is, 25th is a Tuesday, and then I put in a column for resource name. So Carl Smith, I'm able to say he's on going to be on vacation for this period. John Stevens for this period. Okay, what we created was the project calendar. We identify vacation, we identify Saturdays and Sundays. If there was any company holidays or company days off, you would have identified that. So now you can now also identify when the different resources will be on leave. And you can even set up a calendar for each one, but this spreads helps you to see the entire resource sheet at one go. The last thing is how you put a note. You actually go into insert comment and you say, Tom is a skilled worker. And of course, you're gonna see the comment like that. If you like my content, give me a thumbs up.